So we get clean electricity, get dirty electricity. Top is clean, bottom is dirty. Where are our sources? Computers, electricity goes in clean, goes out dirty. Variable speed motors, and by the way, the wind turbines in the Ripley wind farm are variable speed. I work with variable speed motors, big ones, especially on dairy farms, large dairy farms, and they'll, they'll just wreck a herd of cows in six weeks, six months. Television sets, especially flat screens, plasmas, uh, energy efficient lighting, dimmer switches, all this stuff will make you sick. Get them out of your house. Come back for some bulbs and we'll have them in your house. So, look down here in the red, inverters, wind turbines, solar power. <clears throat> Anything that converts AC to DC and back to AC again, you're going to get harmonic. And what happens is they're changing wind energy to electrical energy. And when you do that, if you don't do it right, um, the replications can be severe. And here we are, electricity, AC, at 60 hertz is what your electricity comes into your house at. And uh, I won't get into the technical part of inverters. And, but they all run inverters. Variable speed turbines seem to be worse. Wind turbines connected to the electrical grid. Um, I want to tell you an interesting story. I was working on a large dairy farm down near Tavistock. So the electrician says, we got to get, I said to the electrician, we got to get more grounding on this line. Because I said, it's the only way we're going to fix this bar. So he says, uh, okay, so we got a hold of Hydro One, we had a meeting. Hydro One, electrician, farmer, and I. We're standing in a circle. And uh, Hydro Guy, he's a good guy, he says, yeah, we'll do it for you. We'll ground her. We'll ground the line better, see if we can't help you. And I turned to the farmer and I said, just be darn glad you don't have winter eventually. The Hydro Guy just rolled his eyes. And I thought, and I turned and I said, you know about these things? He didn't say much and I said, you know, all the money that's going in the wind turbines should have went to you guys to fix the infrastructure of this system in Ontario. Because I said, I fight it every day. How bad it is and what it's doing to farmers. And he looks at me and he says, you're exactly right. He says, we've got an outdated, overloaded system. And now we're dropping these things on it. He says, we've got a recipe for a disaster. So, believe me, these guys know it. I did this test uh, just on August 31st. Uh, Dr. Megan Hobbs is actually up at my place. Where she's filming a documentary. Uh, hopefully it'll be out in a year on uh, what dirty electricity does to human and livestock health. And uh, so we've been up filming people and farms. And uh, so we're doing some testing. This I built a new house actually near the turbines. My farm, there was turbines about 900 meters away from my, where I lived. And where I'm living now, I have more around me. The closest one is about 900,000 meters away. Uh, I have none to the west of me. Um, the none to the north of me. I'm kind of situated, but the electrical grid was a big issue. We almost didn't build this house. We bought this property before. The wind turbines were ever constructed. And uh, I actually, uh, we went through a lot of turmoil trying to decide whether to even build. But anyway, this is this waveform here is uh, we I put an in isolation device and I got a major filter, a big filter on my panel. This is ground current. This is recorded between two stakes six feet apart out in my yard. I won't get into all that, but see the noise in this line. See the noise in that. And if you hook on the primary neutral going by my place, that noise is there. It was not there. Let's just put that one. Okay, there's Ripley. And this is primary neutral voltage. This is data. What happened was before windmill, July 2nd, 2007, one of the ladies that lives in the neighborhood uh, see me one day at the mailbox and she says, uh, David, she says, I'm going to one B hearings on these wind turbines and they're talking about straight voltage. Could be a problem. And I says, Really? She goes, Yeah. She says, what do you think we should be doing? And I says, well, I don't know. I says, the first thing I guess you should do is get uh, a snapshot of what's going on on the grounding system of your home. And I said, then we have data before the wind turbines come, right? So we got a sine wave here, electricity, and it's uh, 
It's not too bad. It's not perfectly clean, but it's pretty good. Then, what happened was, February, I won't talk about this place right now. February, one of the families was born, one of the other families, and said, uh, we're really sick, Dave, and we don't know what's wrong. We've got headaches, and ringing in our ears, and we think it's the turbines, but we don't know what it is, and it doesn't seem to be matter how fast they're going. And it was this residence here. So I said, well, I guess I'll come over and test. Well, my goodness, when I seen this, the blue, this is what the power off to the house. They would pull the main power switch in the yard. So we're not drawing any power, so we're not creating this. The blue is on the neutral of the home, primary neutral. The red is sink to floor. I put an ECG patch on the floor and I read between there and the kitchen sink to show people what actually goes through you when you touch the sink. So this is with the wind turbine showing. There's uh, without the sink to floor. See how dirty it is? It's not supposed to be like that. So I started going to meetings with them and uh, with all these families, started recording data at all their homes and same thing in every home. So we got after them and they buried a portion. What happened is they put the lines above ground, the interconnected neutrals, they did everything wrong, but they claim it's right. They say it's the code. I said, yeah, but that's still not right. Anyway, so we got them to bury a section of the line. It's better, but you can see it's not perfect, right? Yeah, so this one's buried. And this one's residence three, I've written, and I, I named them one, three, and uh, four, so I know what homes and nobody else does. This one's uh, four windmills, after windmills, line buried. This was still causing health effects, is what we had to do. We just put a neutral isolator uh, on the transformer pole. It's livable, but they still have, uh, they can hear faint ringing in their ears at times. Residence number four is a horror story. It's a horror story, that's all I'll say. Um, they're moved out. They bought a house in Card and they can't live in their home. I can't fix it. This is the windmills off. This is the windmills on. Uh, so they have a house sitting empty, it's worthless. And he's got a barn with cattle there and he has to come out every day to feed them. And his son lives back the side road and his son and actually his wife uh, have been in a motel in Card since April. So she's pregnant again. And the wind company is paying for that. We had four families for six months living in motels. All the, before they, between the time they got, we started, I started testing and telling them what, what was wrong, and the time they buried the line, they were putting up four families in hotels. They weren't living in their homes. You don't hear about this, do you? So, then I get a call from Shelburne. There's three families up there want me, four families. Ah, five families, I guess it was, five. Five families told me and I kept putting them off because they're so busy and I really did not want to get into this again. Because uh, this gets very stressful. I got an ulcer with the families in Ripley. And I uh, ended up going to the doctor here because they were calling me crying. Because the ladies, the ladies get affected first. And if you look at, I have data that was done years ago. And, uh, the guy that recognized all this, a lot of it was Russian research that he looked at. He was a Czechoslovakian. And ladies, it always affects first, and children. And then the men. And that happened in all these homes. Like the ladies would move to the motels, the guys just tried to stay in the house to get more tough. But eventually they, uh, they were in the hotels too. 